is going to be on a really cool program that is usually commonly asked in interview questions. So for those of you who are trying to prepare for a whiteboard interview question, I think this question is a good one to start off with. One cool thing about this program is that you can complete it in many different ways. Um, funny thing is, I was actually asked this at my last interview, and I completed it in a different way that most people usually complete it in. And they said even though the program works, because I got it to work, um, they said that there's a much better way and a more efficient way to do this. So today I'm going to show you pretty much the most efficient way you can do this palindrome program. So first let me explain what the program is going to do. Basically it's going to be a program that takes in user input and then output whether or not the word that they enter is a palindrome or not. And for those of you who don't know what a palindrome is, it's basically a word that is spelled the same forward as it is backwards. So Hannah, for example, H-A-N-N-A-H, that is spelled the same backwards. Race car is spelled the same backwards. So I'm just going to declare in a variable and name it user input, and it's of type string. And then lastly, I'm going to create my scanner object, which is actually used to take in the input through the console. For those of you who aren't familiar with getting user input through the console, or if you have no idea what a scanner object is, um, I recommend you really check out my previous Java tutorials on uh, one of them is on user input and I'll link that in the description below. Next step is to actually get the user input and the first thing you're going to need to do is prompt the user to enter something. So I'm just going to write a print statement and ask them to enter a word. And then lastly I'm going to set our string variable user input equal to whatever they enter in the console. The next step, of course, would be to invoke our isPalindrome method, which would determine whether or not the word is a palindrome. But we first need to create that method. So as you can see, I put a comment down here that says static isPalindrome method. So, so I'm going to declare our static method. So it's going to be so it's going to be public, meaning it's accessible anywhere, static so that I don't have to create an instance of it to use it in this class, and it belongs to this class. It's going to be of type boolean, it's going to return either true or false. And I'm going to name it is palindrome, something that is related to what the function actually does. And then lastly, it's going to simply take in the string that the user enters. And I'm going to name that user input. So in this function, we're going to be using something called char at. For those of you who know how to you know, manipulate strings, you would be familiar with this function. Um, basically, it'll take in a number and it'll find the character at that specific index. And what we want to do is take the first character of the word and the last character of the word and compare them, see if they're equal. And if they are equal, it's going to go to the next character and the second to last character, and it's going to check if those are equal. And it's going to keep looping outside from in and check against each of the characters and see if they're equal to each other. So I'm going to start by creating my for loop. If you don't know how a for loop should be structured, please make sure you watch my tutorials on for loop. I'm going to be under the assumption that you know how they work. So we're going to set int i equal to zero and i is going to represent the character that we are at. And I'm going to say i is less than or equal to user input dot length divided by 2. Then i plus plus. The reason why I'm dividing this by 2 is because we don't need to loop through each individual character. We actually only need to loop through half of the word to determine whether or not this is a palindrome. And you'll see why. Now we are going to actually compare the characters and check to see if they are equal to each other or not to determine whether or not they are a palindrome. And we do this by using an if statement. And we're going to say if user input dot char at i is not equal to user input dot char at user input dot length minus i minus one return false. But if it manages to get through this for loop without returning false, that means we must return true and that the word is a palindrome. Okay, so let me break down to you guys what this is doing. I'm going to try to create a visual representation of what's going on here so it's easier to explain. Let's say a user enters the word race car. So now let's say we are in the first iteration of our for loop right now. 
meaning this is the first time we are checking against these characters. In our first iteration, i is obviously equal to zero because that's what we originally set it to. So i starts off with zero. So we're saying if user input dot char at zero, meaning r, is not equal to user input dot char at the length of the user's input minus i, which is zero minus one. So let's create a more visual of what this looks like. So our first character that we're checking against is char at i, which is equal to r right now. And then we're gonna take char at user input dot length, which race car, the length of race car is seven. So we're saying seven minus i, i is equal to zero right now. So minus zero and then minus one. That is equal to r, which is our last character. Okay, so you may be wondering what's going on with this math here and why do we grab the last character this way? So we start off with this number, which is the length of our user's input, which is seven. As you can see, we cannot simply grab char at seven because our indexes start with zero. So we're saying char at length minus i, which is currently zero, so we're still at seven right now, and then minus one, which leaves us with r. And we're saying if r is not equal to r, we're returning false. And because we haven't returned false, we're gonna go through the next iteration, meaning i would be equal to one in the next iteration, and that's how we get to the second character. And then we're gonna check against the same thing. Our length is still equal to seven, that never changes. But the value of i is gonna change to one in the next iteration. So we're saying minus one, minus one. So we're gonna subtract one because that's what i is equal to. And then we're gonna subtract another one. Now we're checking to see if a is equal to a. And that's true. So we're in the next iteration now, i is equal to two. After at two, meaning zero, one, two, that makes it c. Our length doesn't change, i changes to two. and that is equal to C. So next, we're gonna try to take character at seven minus two, which is five, and then subtract another one, and we're left with C. And, throughout, and it's gonna keep looping until it hits this number right here, until this condition is false. We're saying I is gonna be less than or equal to user input dot length divided by two. This is so that we don't have to iterate twice, meaning we don't have to go through each character two times. We can instead work our way outside and in and stop at C. And E is equal to E, therefore it's gonna return true at the end. What I meant to say was we don't need to loop through each individual character in this word. All we really need to do is loop through half and compare it to the other half. We do that by comparing the first character to the last character, second character to the second to last character, and we keep looping through until we hit the middle. Then we stop. If you have any questions and if you are confused on how this is working, feel free to comment down below because that was really hard for me to explain. But basically, long story short, this for loop is going to loop through the amount of times of the user's input divided by two. So if I enter the word geek, which is four characters, it's gonna only loop twice. It's gonna take the last character and the first character, compare them both, and then compare the two middle characters as well. I'm gonna check to see if they're equal. Now, if the first character and the last character are not equal, it's just gonna return false and not even bother to loop through the rest. Now, let's actually see if this works. We need to invoke our isPalindrome method, but we also need to return a message to our console to let our user know whether or not this is a palindrome. So I'm gonna do system.out. .println. This is not a palindrome. This is a palindrome. And then last but not least, we are gonna call is palindrome and then pass in the user's input. So I'm gonna run this program to test. and we see our prompt that says enter a word, so I'm gonna enter hello. And it says this is not a palindrome. 
Let's try a word that's actually a palindrome. Race car. It says this is a palindrome. Let's try another one to make sure that it's actually working. Let's do Hannah. So as you can see, our program is working. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. I tried my best to explain this as good as I could. I know it's confusing, but when you actually look at the code and when you're actually writing it, and if you practice, it'll actually really start to make sense. You can also find the source code on my GitHub. I'll link that in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.